my name is Ruth Hall, and I was, I remember, about uh, 9 11. I was at my daughter, but was very young, and I came downstairs and, and I looked at the TV, and it, it was small, and I, I didn't know what it was, so I said to my husband, Oh, gee, there is a fire. He said, No, there is not a fire. He said, It's much worse. And then I realized what happened. And of course, it was a shock. I couldn't understand how anybody could do such a monstrous thing. But it happened. I remember where I was on 9-11 very well. I was at home in Portsmouth. And it was a weekday. And Daniel was not even one. He's a millennium baby. So, wait a minute. I have that wrong, so he was one. <laughs> um, in any event, I just started watching TV, and I grew up in Washington, D.C., and my sister lived in Manhattan for a while, so I know New York well, having uh, spent some time there as a kid and in college. So it was almost like a, you know, my second city. So when I saw the planes crash, I was horrified, um, shocked. I've been World Trade Center uh, probably a dozen times. I've been to Windows in the World. Again, you know, many times. Well, I guess five, six, seven. Even had a wedding celebration at Windows of the World, which is a very famous restaurant at the top. So it uh, it had some personal meaning, but it was just uh, I was absolutely shocked that something could happen like that in in our great country. How about you, Alex? Where were you? Well, I really don't remember that well. Speak up, hun. Well, basically, I was there today. I mean. Ten years ago, I was barely one. I remember that I was sitting there with my two sisters in the bag in in the house at, at my house when suddenly the the all the channels on the TV turned this huge emergency broadcast stuff and it kept on playing the news of this thing of these things. And so from what I've heard, my, my parents were really alarmed. They didn't understand it as well as most people, but they knew enough to be really pretty much shocked. Yeah. As much as, much as the rest of us. So, so it was all in confusion, and, and it took everyone there a while to get sort everything sorted out on what was going on. Uh, actually, I'm not even sure if people even knew what was going on when it happened in the city. That's great. So this is Alex, I'm Trish, and this is my son Daniel. How about 9-11 for you, Daniel? I don't really remember where I was, but my mom tells me I was at home in Portsmouth, and she was really sad. Well, I was crying all day, yeah, so that made you sad. Yeah, made me kind of sad. Yeah. And so, in the 10 years since you guys were so young, you were just babies, what has it meant to grow up in, in a 9-11 world? Well, kind of like a normal world, just when it was bigger, we just, we just looked bigger precautions. Like after a big accident happened, we just looked like looking for the way to the street. And then we were born to become the accident and understand how the accident is always help the place become better. We have better remote security. Everything in the scars itself first. Probably still gonna be there for a while. We don't even think they're gone now. But at least but if there's one good thing that came out of that is that it gave us a reason to be a bit more cautious. That's excellent. Anything to finish up with Daniel? I think it made us like security wise tighter after 9-11, so my name's Holly Fadden and on September 11th I was at work in a company in New Durham and I remember I'm one of our engineers came in and said that uh, they thought that the uh, terrorists had hit the Twin Towers or a plane had hit the Twin Towers and at that time I don't we didn't have any TV or anything so Somebody got a radio, and I remember listening all day to the radio. And I actually live in New Jersey, so I'd gone home at lunch to um, watch it on TV. That's where I was.
Hello, my name is Greta Goodale and 9-11 I was getting ready to go to work and I remember trying to get a hold of my daughter down in Florida and I remember I couldn't get through because all the cell phones were all shut down. Even the house phones and everything were all shut down. So that's what I remember. Oh, uh, Skip Cardinal. I happen to be watching a TV when I, I see the plane go into the plane go into the uh, towers there. And I, I couldn't really figure out I said, is this real or what, you know? Yeah. But that's what I remember right now. Working at Seabrook on 9-11, I just remember that uh, while I was at work, somebody came up to me and, and uh, asked me if I'd heard that the World Trade Center had been hit, and I hadn't. I was out on the manufacturing floor, and uh, so then we all ran to find the TV, and watch the news, and, and watch the rest of it as it kind of unfolded. It was Barbara Fecto, and I was at home on 8 Cortland Street in Farmington when it happened. It was very unbelievable and uh, very scary. Very sad. All things combined, you never figured that that could ever happen to your country. Duncan, and I was sitting home in my living room watching TV. And 9 11 went down. I watched the building fall over. My name is Tiffany Madison, and on 9 11, I was in school in sixth grade in history class. Ironic, because that day made history. And um, a teacher came in and told us all that the World Trade Centers had um, been attacked and we were all sent home from school and I remember when I got home that it was a very emotional experience for me and that's why today I'm wearing my patriotic stripes because I don't have a flag bandana today. I always wear my flag bandana but I don't have it so I've got stripes and I have my yellow ribbon in my hair to support the troops that are still fighting in, in all wars. But today is a very special day because it, 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 it's special to um, I was working in Portsmouth at Flextronics. I was at work, I remember hearing about it, catching snippets on the news, and oh my gosh, I couldn't believe that it was actually happening. And then I called my husband and he told me about it. He was watching it at home. Hi, I'm and Bethany. Was um, I, was, I was actually sleeping. I got a call um, that something had happened to the towers. Um, and I ran upstairs and I watched the video and I was on the phone to a friend letting her know what had happened um, when the second plane flew into the tower. I was 14 years old when this incident happened on 9-11. I was actually in school the day it happened, um, sitting in classroom and we were actually watching it on the news. Um, and actually saw both planes hit the towers at the time when I was in school. They didn't cancel school or anything, but the next day they did. Um, so, for those, all the men and women that served for our country in the tower as well, I pray and I also for salute my soldiers that have passed away for going and saving all these people in that place. At work, I work for the elevator. My boss called me in the front room when the first airplane hit, and all the residents came in and we sat there and watched the second plane hit, and we watched it all day and hard. It was just unbelievable. Not much more you can say except for the worst thing that happened. I don't need that much. You grab them. My name is Dottie Bean. I live in Farmington, and on 9 11 01, I was sitting in my living room waiting for my forester to arrive for a meeting, and I had a phone call from a friend who told me what had happened. I put on the, the television, it was appalled. We had a very short meeting, and he left, and I sat and watched what was going on. And what we remember most was my in laws were living with us then, and my brother and sister in law from Oregon were here, and they'd all gone up into Canada for vacation. And when this happened, they were trying to get home, and they were worried about getting across the country line to get back into the United States. They had a lot of problems doing it, but they made it back. My and name is Corrine Greeley Smith, and on 9-11, uh, I was sitting in my cottage, and I had just finished a conversation with a cousin I hadn't seen for a long time, and she left, and my son called me and said, put the TV on. And I put the TV on just in time to see the, the second tower and go into the second tower. And I was just horrified to 
to see it. I said, this can't be happening, not here. And it was, it was horrifying to me to think that, that someone would, would take these lives. And, uh, and so without any, any, any feelings of, of, of it at all, it was just tremendous. And, uh, but that's where I was, I was at, 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 which is now my home. I, we, we renovated it and it's now my home. My, my name is Donald Marble from the First Congregational Church in Farmington. On the September 11th, 10 years ago, I was at my home with my family. And certainly it was a devastating situation. I also remember Pearl Harbor Day, and that was a devastating time. Thank you. It's Deborah Oschlager. And on the morning of 9-11, um, I was living in Brattleboro, Vermont at the time. And it was um, the day after um, my daughter's first birthday. And I remember I'd gotten up with her in the morning. Um, she turned a year old the day before. And uh, yesterday would have been um, her 10th birthday. And um, so this has um, a very personal time for me also. Um, just the fear that ran in everybody's lives, and then um, on top of that, um, a personal layer of, of loss. Um, this is a significant date for me for many reasons. Um, but because of the continuing courage of the people that were there to help other people get through this because there's so many more that lost more than I can ever even imagine of losing. And um, so yesterday would have been my daughter's 10th birthday. And so I, I go into today with a heavy heart. And um, it's a day that will remain forever with me from my own personal losses and um, and the losses that this country experienced. Um, and on 9-11, I was living in Concord, New Hampshire, and I was getting ready to go to work. At the time, I worked at the Fox Red Mall in Newington, and I remember turning on the news and just being so confused. It was about 9.30 in the morning. I had no idea what was going on. Uh, my first thought was my for my friend Phil, who lived in New York City at the time, and immediately tried calling him, and of course, like everybody, couldn't get through. Um, I called my husband and asked him if he knew what was going on, and at that, at that time, all we knew that was planes had crashed into the towers. Um, it was it was so scary, so confusing. Um, I still went to work because I had to, and they ended up actually closing the mall that day where Newington is so close to Seabrook, they were afraid of an attack at the nuclear plant as well, which thankfully that didn't happen. Um, it is just, it, it was so scary, and not knowing everything that happened at the time was was the scariest thing because um, we didn't know if there was going to be more attacks and I just remember being so grateful when that evening around 10 o'clock I finally got through to my friend Phil and he was safe thankfully and it was just it was such a relief to know that, that he was okay and at the same time it was just so sad to know that there were so many other people that had lost their lives. Right and, uh, I had just opened and then one of the people in town came in and told me I needed to turn the TV on because we've been attacked. That's where I was. And uh, I remember 9-11 and it was one hell of a day. That, uh, I remember I turned on the TV that morning and uh, 
right after the first plane had struck. And I thought it was an accident. And then when, when that ever, the second one ever struck, I said, oh my God. And we were very, very lucky that day. That, you know, they did that with four planes. They could have done that with 40 planes. You know, Chicago, everywhere. They could have done that and we would have never had a chance. Just thank God it was what it was and it wasn't worse. They took us by surprise. I mean, as, as good as we are, goes to show you, they, they don't have to be all that good, but they can, they can get you an element of surprise. Yeah, I remember that day very distinctly. I'll never forget it. And then where were you? Uh huh? And on 9 11, where were you? I was at home. Do you remember anything special about it? I was just surprised when I saw it on the TV. That's all. And on 9 11, uh, 2001, I was still living in New Jersey, and it was about 15 miles away from the uh, disaster. Uh, it was around. I was working on the job, listening to the radio, and I heard about somebody hitting the uh, Twin Towers or a plane. I think, well, that's pretty stupid. It's a clear state. Uh, I figure it's one of these, uh, these tourist planes that they have flying around the uh, towers. Then when I heard about the second one, I go, oops, <laughs> we're in trouble. So uh, I finished up around 10 o'clock, and in my town, there's a look like, lookout point that you can see the whole New York skyline. So I figured, oh, great, I can get a nice vantage point from there. Police had the whole thing cordoned off. They, uh, it was almost like a circus. People were like coming in droves, trying to get a, get a you know, good look for, for it. So I didn't go there, so I went home and got to watch the second tower come down on TV like everybody else. But uh, the scary part was it was only like 15 miles away. It was like you know, a little close for comfort. And then... Uh, uh, I'm Dennis Gagney. Uh, 9 11, I was uh, welding pipe at the uh, Newington Power Station outside. And uh, fortunately, we were one of the lucky people to have a radio. Uh, and we were listening to music, and all of a sudden they broke in and they told us about the uh, plane crashing into the uh, Trade Center. And I thought, well, that's a little mysterious, you know. I thought uh, maybe it's a little plane, but and, uh, we found out later it was a big plane. And then moments later, we hear another plane, and then I go, here we go, terrorism. And uh, so uh, they ended up uh, shutting down the plant and sending us all home because they were nervous about our own security there near the, near the fuel depot. So they sent us home and uh, I spent the whole afternoon watching the news and I was just amazed at what had happened. And, uh, yeah, it's uh, quite a thing. But uh, praise God, he's in control. Sleep in my bed because I had just come home from work overnight shift, and my husband woke me up and told me what was going on, and we watched it on TV. It was a very sad day. Hi, I'm Stan Frieda. I live here in Farmington, and 10 years ago on 9/11, I was teaching school, and this class had just started. I was in chemistry class, and we got a knock on the door. A student came in with a note that said something was going on in New York, there was a disaster. So, you know, we talked about it with the students and luckily we had cable. We hooked up the cable and the TV and we watched it. Uh, my chemistry class and I saw the first, the second tower go down um, and uh, get hit. And then basically the rest of the day was a lot of um, damage control and, and talking and processing and, and watching a lot of the news as it unfolded on TV. So we gave our students a living history that day. And uh, I'm Jonas that's where I was. Zoller. And on uh, on the morning of 9/11, I was at work. Remember, I remember who mentioned it. Somebody had said something about a uh, a plane hitting the World Trade Center, and the, and the thought had been that it was like a, a Cessna or something, some sort of small plane accident. And uh, so we got on CNN, and we were watching things develop and trying to work at the same time and uh, with that not necessarily following following events um, real intently at first but when the second plane hit it became obviously apparent that, the, that there was much different character of thing afoot 
and um, and then I think like the whole company pretty much was everybody was watching things unfold on their computers. Um, And I don't know, you know, I, I've, I've been watching a lot of things this, this last couple of days, and the thing that probably has struck a lot of people and, and, and remains with a lot of people is the whole image of the firemen going up. And a lot of people are going down. And it's a uh, you know, phenomenal commitment to, to their cit fellow citizens. And, it makes you, you know, proud of people you don't know that, that are, that are uh, fellow citizens and fellow uh, humans, you know, uh, reacting well in, in awful circumstances. Uh, I fire about six years, uh, September 11, 2000. I was actually driving my daughter off at school, uh, listening to the Howard Stern Show, which is out in New York City, and he made a comment about the World Trade Center. I've been hit by a plane. I thought it was a joke. I didn't think it was all that funny. So I went to my house and turned the TV on, and, and here I am. That's one of the reasons I do what I do now. Um, firefighter EMT, been with Farms and Fire two and a half years now. Um, September 11, 2001, I was in sixth grade. I remember being brought into a classroom uh, with the rest of the sixth graders and explained what had happened or happened. Um, and then released from school early and talked with mom and dad. Um, and that's part of the reason I got into doing what I am today. It's so hard.